Because people are insecure and they need validation from others. And I think they use items to get validation from others. I really do. I think, I think um, when I think about anything I buy, it's 100% for me. Even all the tchotchkes, the thrill of finding them at a garage sale, or like the one thing I actually buy that I think is silly is like custom New York Jets jerseys, but it's so for me. Um, and I'm happy that I don't buy things for other people's opinions, but I think most people do. I just watched last night your uh, Melbourne talk that you gave, I believe it was last, Maybe it was past winter, ago, yeah. yeah. Um, and you were talking about, and try, you were essentially encouraging 30 to 40 year olds to downsize, move back with the parents. Where does that come from? There's something very in the ear that uh, is manifesting to me that's clear, which is we have a lot of people out there that really pretty much live their lives based on other people's opinions. And I just know that right now somebody's listening or watching who overextended themselves and owns things they can't afford actually desperately loves their parents. Like, you know, it probably comes from a place of like secretly I'd like to still be living with my parents. I like them so much. It'd be nice. You know, I don't feel a burden if I walk through the kitchen and be like, hey mom. Like I can live my life but like it'd be nice to say hey mom. Like I like it. Anyway, nonetheless, I think a lot of people are overextended and I think they could restart and if they're in the context of you're overextended, you're underwater, you're in debt, you're living too much above your means, you can sell off your home that you bought that was too big for you in the first place, get some level of dollars back or at least get out of debt or, or a mortgage, move back in with your parents which is a, if you're, if you're not worried about your high school friends or your coworkers saying, oh I'm sorry, that you move back in with your parents, if you can deal with the stigma, well then that's probably a nice way to save some, you know, first of all, again, plenty of parent and children relationships are not great, but plenty are amazing. And they're- Good enough to save the money. <laughs> there's millions of relationships out there where both the kid and the parent would think it's the greatest thing that ever happened that the kid came back and lived there for a year or two, including the family, including, but you know, people have pride or, or, or have, a preconceived notion that that's unacceptable, that's in the air and so I'm trying to start conversations that I believe in. I believe there are hundreds of thousands of people who would become miraculously happier if they, uh, if they saw the world in a different way uh, and did something as practical and as out of left field in at least today's popular society as selling their home, getting back that equity, moving in with their folks for a couple years and reestablishing a career, you know, one of the big things that I'm passionate about is are you doing something you enjoy to do? Like happiness and fulfillment has to become a much bigger part of the conversation than financial upside. I'm, I'm always very hurt when people think that I'm pushing hustle and too much work and make it for the money. You know, my behavior doesn't map to that. And then it being flexible enough to allow yourself to adjust. Your life changes when you have a child. You know, he's a different man at 22 than he is at 28. There's a, you know, you can't beat yourself up for changing your mind. You just have to be thoughtful and self-aware of why you're changing your mind. Sure. Maybe the person you fall in love with is materialistic and you're just in love with him or her. You just are. You fucking love them. You want to marry them and they love shit. So all of a sudden you're buying shit that you never bought before. That's not, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that as long as you're grounded into what's happening. Right? Like you're super proud of yourself of never spending money on anything and you kept it basic but then you fall in love and he or she wants fucking a fancy belt with the logo on it. You know, like every, and there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because I have my own versions. Maybe I don't want to wear fashion brands or watches but I like buying custom Jets jerseys of random bench players, you know. That's a waste of 150 bucks for a custom jersey of a guy who might not be on the team in two months but when I go to a Jets game and people are like, you have a blank, blank jersey, that's me peacocking that I'm the best fan. <laughs> so it's okay, but what's not okay and what I'm trying to fix is you're doing it to hide your insecurities that you haven't made it yet. That's not okay, because you'll lose. You will lose. If you bought a BMW on money you don't have because you want to look good amongst your peer set that you've made it and you haven't, you will lose. You will lose.
especially during this era right now where the market is good. If you're not winning right now, you really fucking suck. <laughs> it's the truth. Because this is not fucking, you know, 2001, this is not 2008. You know how many less people buy water filtration systems when the fucking market collapses? Less people. You know how many less people buy fucking cases of $4,000 wine like today is happening at Wine Library when the market collapses? Less people. You know how many less people are buying fucking homes? A lot less people. Real life. And like, what's so fun for me is this is 100%. I will not live the rest of my life in a bullish market and growth. So like, recalling, like I can't wait to air this content the day the whole fucking world melts. <laughs> and it's gonna be like, I told you so, and I hope you did something about it. Because now it gets really weird. I heard you make that comment about student loan debt. That's, oh God. I'm gonna be so right about that. Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna be so historically right about that. They're lending money to kids in huge debt. There's nothing else to say. There's nothing else to say. The banks are doing it again. Yeah. This time it's not bullshit mortgage. The things you guys understand better. I don't. Still don't fully. I mean, I understand packaging up horseshit and not having a true recognition, a true system. They're like, you. You guys probably in the younger set. You guys know you have friends or acquaintances who are 180 thousand in debt on 9% interest, are making 47 thousand a year, and are buying expensive shit or have a new apartment. It's true. It's true. It's, true. it's true. it's going to be so bad. It's not about coming up with a business that's going to do 10 million bucks. It's about understanding how much money you make now working a job, what you spend your money on to live, and trying to figure out how quickly you can get into a place where you don't have to work in a job. One more time. How many hands work somewhere but want to do their own thing? Raise your hands. More than half this audience. Meanwhile, let me tell you why most of the hands that just went up will never get there. They buy dumb shit. Do you know how many people here literally drive cars to impress people that they fucking hate? People literally going in debt or getting further from leaving the job they don't like to do something that will make them happy because they have to buy a certain car that has a logo that impresses people that they fucking despise. Do you understand how fucked up that is? Do you know how many people here live in homes where they don't use more than half the rooms in the house? Like, we are so fundamentally in a vortex that makes no sense that I am unbelievably passionate understanding how much money you make and what you can do to get off of it, but the problem is, again, people are doing so many things to keep up with the Joneses, to make it look like they're successful, to appease their parents, and a million fucking other things that have nothing to do with themselves. And we need to change that fucking game. And the, thank you. And the internet is the most likely thing. The internet, is a place where you can make $54,000 a year just talking about peanut butter. I know tens of thousands of people, and I know thousands of people extremely well, and I know hundreds of people deeply well. There is no correlation between how much money someone makes and their level of happiness. I have friends who make $47,000 a year and are the happiest people I know. Their work-life balance is on point, they're part of two soccer teams, they play video games, they watch every show they want, they take two vacations that they scrap together, and they're freaking happy as hell. And I know tons of people who I grew up with in the Silicon Valley boom, who have hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank account, and are as miserable and as lonely and as broken as you'll ever see. So I implore all of you to please reverse engineer and figure out who you are, and figure out what level of monetizing and stuff you need and what level of creativity you need. I promise you one thing, one thing that will catch you very off guard. I should be way more rich. I leave money on the table every day. I, I've left ungodly amounts of money on the table. I spend tons of times spending, sending DMs and engaging with people, meeting people randomly and not cashing in. I actually believe the statement I'm about to make. I think that I love the journey and the game of entrepreneurship so much that I have subconsciously sabotaged my financial upside 
to make sure I can play this a little longer because I fear if the numbers keep getting too big, eventually it will take the fun out of it. When you were lucky enough, like I am, to actually do something that you love so much, do something that puts pressure against the one thing you care about besides it, which is the time I spend with my family. My family is my whole life. And being this and doing this is the only thing that cuts into that. I couldn't breathe if I wasn't an entrepreneur. I didn't breathe when I wasn't an entrepreneur. That's the reason I got D's and F's in school, because I just couldn't be me. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have, the, when you really know in business, it's gonna be two things. Very early significant success, and you're loving it mm-hmm. for not the money. That's why all the other stuff matters so much. If you're not trying to catch up to Rick, if you're not trying to impress Sally, then the, then the way you're gonna know is you love it for loving it, not for the money it's giving it to you. So many of my internet contemporaries, because I can't call them friends, because I can't be friends with somebody like this, <laughs> love stuff because of the money. They love affiliate marketing because of the money. They love network marketing and MLM because of the money. If you're the kind of person that's okay with like ripping people off for your own self gain because you need the money and you're that insecure, that, I'm not gonna, who the fuck am I? I'm not gonna judge you, it's just not my cup of tea. It's not who I am or what I'm about or who I want to associate with. I don't care how fast your car is or how hot your chicks are. Just not interested. It's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. I'm probably, cause if I don't figure out what I want to do until I graduate, uh, my dad's probably gonna pull my ears and put him in his business. That makes sense. Yeah. So the, the good news is you don't have to go. You think you have to go because you're letting them have a leverage point. And that leverage is normally money, not love. Kids love to say, kids, everybody comes up with excuses. Kids too. You love to say you don't want to let your dad down. What you mean is you're not sure how you're going to maintain a decent lifestyle. It's people's inability or want to pay the price for the big stuff. Which is what, crazy to me in college because that's when you should find your homies. Pat, like the number one piece of advice I have if you're a winner is find three other winners, look at each other and say, 22 to 27, we're together. Let's fucking go. And now with the internet, with people building businesses, you don't need New York or San Francisco or San Diego. Go live in Mississippi. Cost of living is low. Yeah. Go live right next to a fucking white castle that you can walk to. <laughs> Being serious, by the way. As long as you have an internet connection, let's go. Like, I, I'm giving you my dream. I wish I knew that. I wanted to pay back my parents for what they did for me. It wasn't a drag. I signed up for going there for a while, building something for them. I like not owing anybody anything. And I love the feeling that my parents and I are even, which is a rare thing for a kid to say. Especially with the amazingness that my parents are and what they did for me. We're probably still not even because they fucking really did it for me. But I like it. I'm a hell of a lot closer than most people because I really did something for them, for real. And so that's cool. So I like that. But if I didn't have that gear or that well-parented, if it was a, like, if I, fuck me, man. Nothing's more interesting right now than to go to Mississippi with my five college friends and literally, there's nothing like building something. Like, it was much more fun before it was six figures. Those first few, right? Yeah. There's nothing like building something, right? It's true. Of course. This is all the burden now. It's so fun when you don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you're just trying to figure it out and you're just fucking ghetto to the max. That's what I want. That's what I, dr- I listen, I like Rocky when he's drinking the egg and fucking, like, I like that. That's why I want people to love the process. And it gets a lot harder to love the process when you have a husband or wife, kids, stuff. The big mistake is not the making of the money, it's the spending of the money. Most people want to look the part of an entrepreneur that came up with the next Supreme or Adidas brand or the next Uber or Facebook, yet are $40,000 in debt, working a job that they hate and literally 
if they went to the five discount stores that dominate this market, buy things on clearance, go home, take a picture with their fucking phone, and upload to eBay, and then when people buy it, go to the post office and ship it, they would be able to get out of debt and get into a financial place. But people don't wanna do that because they don't wanna be judged for that being their hustle. Most people in this room and this world would rather lose looking like they're doing something successful than win and be judged for doing something that seems dorky. It's fucking facts. And that leads me to the thing that I matter the most, which is why you are living your life based on other people's opinions. If I could punch every person's mom in the face in this audience, I would. It's scary to me how much pressure parents put on their kids and use them as products to look good to the other parents that they're spending their time on when it is not in the best interest of their kids' happiness. It's just a real broken system, it's really unfortunate and I am the byproduct of parents that went the other way which really allowed me to lean into the things I was passionate about even though in the 90s in America immigrant kids were supposed to get straight A's If you follow me on Instagram, you saw my report card, that thing is fucking ugly. That is the reason I get to stand here today because I had nothing, so I had adversity because the quickest way not to win in life is have too much when you start. Dude, there's no difference between six figures and eight figures. Like what's the fucking difference? Like I get, I'm like practical, I understand, but like what? Two extra bedrooms? Like what, an extra trip? Like the caviar supplement, <laughs> like, like what, right? Like the reason to make more money is to close a vulnerability and an insecurity. The reason young men want to make money is to get girls. You already have her. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the point, I really mean that. I mean it, you literally like have no, like there's not a whole lot, especially if you give any fucks about legacy. People say they want legacy but they use that as a disguise to make more money. We need to change the conversation, period, about the aspiration's not to be a millionaire, it's to be happy. Amen. For real, like, you know how happy you are? You imagine 16 year old you being like, I'm gonna go to Peru and I'm gonna fucking, like, get the fuck. And and, 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 and I think the universe, because for for at one point in my life too, like, I had the money or or, or everything was there that I always wanted, but then I took a step back and said, I was not happy. I left the number one radio station in the world. My 2019 agenda is to make happy, like for you to say, as you're, and you're doing it subconsciously. Like you're not, not everyone's a million, for you to say not everyone's happy at 27. If I can replace the word millionaire With with happy, and I'm crazy, I think I can pull it off. What do you do, Gary, when, let's say you're at a location or you're at a point in your life that you're, obviously you need chill, you need to pay bills but you're no longer happy, what, what do you? You need to change your bills. Okay, okay. You need to not buy a fresh fucking hoodie. You, you may need to, to move into a shittier apartment. Okay. I'm being dead serious. One of the other conversations I'm having is change your bills. Never invest something you can't afford to lose completely because then you won't have to invest, pull out, like you won't get caught in the margins. Everything I have in Wall Street, which I don't trust those fuckers down there for anything, is completely predicated on that I will never look at it for the rest of my entire life. It doesn't exist. That is why it's good to build a personal brand because it's yours in any market, but it has to be built on truth and merit. And what I'm worried about is everybody's getting ahead, like, Gary, conferences, Gary, da, 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 I don't have any money, I'm in debt. I'm like, I'm like, let me, hold on. You have $7,000 in credit card debt? Yes, what do I do? I'm like, the first thing you do is fucking sell the $8,000 suit you're wearing. Yeah. Yeah, but I was told that I have to look the part, to, like, I mean, just fucking. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing that scares me too is because we've been just, as a company, people know us as a company, they don't know me personally because we have such a big team now. That's what Slowly, instead of fucking razz pizzazz on fucking Instagram, yeah. write a thoughtful six years into my journey piece on LinkedIn. Write a fucking post right now on LinkedIn tonight called six years in or make it clever. It's where I'm creative like 365, 2,000 days into my journey. A manifesto, the, you know? Or when you're writing and you realize, wait a minute, I'm just writing about nine things I've learned. So cool, nine things I've learned in my first 2,000 days in business. Post. Link in your email bio. 
underneath all your information, CEO, co-founder, right? Slowly but surely, it's tortoise versus the hare, brother. Yeah. It's fucking as simple as that is. What's so confusing is I have the energy of a super hare, <laughs> but the actions of a tortoise. <laughs> What's actually happening is the internet is finally mature enough that it is at such a scale that literally every person in this room can win and not at the expense of anybody else in this room because the long tail is that huge if they're willing to lean into things that most people aren't willing to lean into. Humility, getting quiet in their head from everybody else's judgment, patience as fuck, patience as fuck. Nobody has ever built anything meaningful overnight. People have inherited money. You can win the lotto. It happens, but not for the 99.9%. And all of this is available to every person here if they're willing to figure out how they communicate to the world. And now the most important part, I laugh at you. You know why? Because a lot of you commented about this conference today during the day. Some of you complain that people came up here and sold, right? I am a weird fucking dude. I decided to look at everybody here who complained about people up here to sell, and I decided to audit their social media profiles, their Facebook pages and Twitter accounts. Let me tell you about all the people that complained that people came up here and sold. Every fucking post out of their mouth on their Facebook is selling shit. It's fucking funny. It's fucking hypocrisy at scale. People shitting on other people selling, yet every post out of their mouth is buy this. My favorite, one person here complaining has all, every post is come for my free assessment, which is their sales pitch. And so I highly recommend everybody here starts really becoming religious about empathy. You wanna really win in life? Figure out what empathy is and practice it. And I have no idea how to teach it, but fucking get it into your skull. The reason I sell so well is cause the only thing I think about is the audience. Not what's in it for me, what's in it for them. That will always work. The reason I have a good organization and culture is because I work for 900 people, not they work for me. The biggest mistake that many of you will make within an organization is when you go from doing to being a manager, you think you've made it and now people work for you. That's the beginning of you working for them. And so we are really in desperate need of perspective. And so what you may wanna do is not actually strategize your Instagram post based on how many followers or likes you're gonna get, but maybe actually weirdly, maybe just one time, it would be a good idea to think what the few people that decided to follow you actually get out of you putting that picture up. Maybe that will work. You wanna build a fucking audience? It's not gonna be bullshit engagement groups or fake followers or all the other horseshit hacks that everybody wants to fucking figure out to have the perception of having 4,000 or 10,000 or 100,000 fans. It's actually putting in the work to create a meaningful community based on you actually bringing them value. How about that for a fucking strategy? And another thing while I'm on that, for so many people that are complaining that they don't have a big enough audience, how do you have the audacity to wish for more fans when you don't go into your own comments when you only get 17 of them and reply to the people that are already part of your community? From 2007 to 2011, when nobody knew who the fuck I was, and Twitter was the platform of the day, I spent every day replying to every single tweet that made a mention of me, and used to go to sleep at three and four o'clock in the morning until I completely got to everybody, and that's how I built my foundation. People want the glitz and the glamour and the caviar, but they're not willing to eat the shit. Period. If, if you, I mean, if you don't understand how this actually plays out, there is no fucking shortcut. There's no hack, there's no tip, there's just the work. My favorite are the fitness influencers on Instagram. They figured it out in fitness. That, you know, they eat well, they work out every day, they're so disciplined, yet for their business or their social media following, they're looking for the fucking shortcut. The shit they make fun of 
that people do in health, they're doing in social and in business.